agree to being out there. To me, as no, a I mean, if something, so if say, if say, for instance, and you ask me what caused the universe, I would say to you, and something caused it. I wouldn't say a science caused it. Do you see? Because okay. uh, do you see? So, atoms excluding caused the universe. What caused those atoms? But what caused the, the god? No, but uh, th that's a getaway. <laughs> that's a like, no, that's no, escape route, I would say. Nobody knows. What okay, so that. what I would say to you, atoms, if atoms were to cause the universe, anything for to cause something, they need to be, uh, what's it, they need to have certain uh, essential uh, attributes. Would you agree with me? At least they have to be conscious. There has to be something to start with. Yeah, there has to be, but that start in thing, if it's a non-conscious matter, like rock. Rock is a matter, isn't it? Yeah. Or an atom is a, rock, uh, it's a matter, isn't it? Yeah. If they're not conscious, can they cause something? No. No. Fantastic. So they need to be conscious. What else they need to have? What sort of attributes they need to be? They need to obviously li, 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 some sort of have some sort of power, or like a lot more power than the universe. Do you see? Would you say so? Yeah. Fantastic. So what we're saying to you is God, particularly the, the Islamic view of God. I'm a Muslim, by the way. Uh, God is all powerful being that possess these attributes to cause the universe. Then how do you choose which God? There's lots of different gods out there. Fantastic. Who, who decides which God is the best God? What Good question. Good question. God so God? from Islam, I'm not sure if you have you read anything about Islam or Islamic belief. I'm not particularly. No, no, no. Yeah, I'll explain it to you if you don't mind. So Islam is the only religion in the world that believes in something called fitrah. Fitrah is an uh, innate disposition innate disposition that, that we're born with to believe in God. So we believe in inherently, we're, believe, we're born believing God already. We're programmed to, to believe in God. So that's what you have within, within you. So you have the basic tools, tools to believe in God in the, in, and you're born with that. And then you have all these ideologies, as you said, all these faiths, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, you name it. And we believe those ideologies can never connect with your innate disposition. You know why? Because your innate disposition uh, tells you God is one and you're born with these innate disposition and these ideas always you're, you're, you're fighting against with it and hence that's why you're agnostic and atheist I would say. So, so Christianity for instance says God is like became a baby. A rational being would say, how can a baby cause the, uh, this magnificent universe? How can God die? How can God be three in one? And when you ask Christianity, Christians these questions, they cannot rationally explain to you, like a rational person like yourself. But religion you isn't rational. Though. No, we will, like except Islam. A large, a bigger God no, but there, except Islam. I'd add, I'd add a little caveat, except Islam. And Islam, as I say to you, because you, you haven't read much about it, Islam goes with your intellect as well as your emotion. So Islam is convincingly, li, li, has a robust argument. I think you're blocking the camera, government, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's right. You can stay here. So Islam is convincing in both ways, emotionally as well as rationally. So Islam has a lot of rational arguments. May I give you one of the arguments of Islam uh, in terms of the, the who caused the universe? So, for instance, uh, the Quran says, were they created from nothing? Or were they created on themselves? Themselves? Us? Did they create the heavens and the earth? Certainly those who believe this have no certainties. I'm just paraphrasing it. So let's, it gives you variables of what could cause the universe. Could the universe come from nothing? What's your definition of nothing? <laughs> but, but doesn't God come from nothing? No, we say God. I feel like they're both just, you know, they both got to come from something to start with. No, we say anything that begins to exist must have a cause. The universe began to exist at one point in a time, isn't it? Yeah? So therefore, scientists say the universe came to existence at one point. And scientists say the universe is expanding it. So who's expanding it? That's the question you need to ask. So, and you know the expansion, have you heard about the universe, the universe expanding? This is actually mentioned in the Quran, the holy book of the Muslims. Oh, I had a Quran, I'll give it to someone, I was going to give it to you. Bless you. What's your name, by the way? Bethlehem. 
Basli, I'm Noor or Noah. Basli, what I would say to you is the universe, we know it began to exist at one point in time. And, and from an Islamic point of view, we have a robust evidence that the universe began to exist and God caused it. And God is uncaused. Because if you were to say what caused God, uh, then you'll have an infinite regression and it will never end. And that's not actually something that we can conceive of, like we can think of. The universe will never come to existence if, if God is always caused by another God, another God. Uh, you have to have a stopping point where you say, okay, there was, there was, there was God always, eh? and then He brought the universe into existence. When, we, when I say He, we just—it's it's a language thing. We don't believe God has a gender, by the way. Did you know that? No, He is a, like, for instance, when the when the Queen says, "We declare this," and she says, "We," it's a it's a it's a royal we. Yeah, so it's just a language wise. Yeah, but Islamically, we say God is not a male or female, it's unlike any other human being. But yeah. if, if God isn't male or female, why does Islam treat women as secondary citizens? No, that's not Islam. Islam doesn't treat women as, as a, a, a secondary, uh, as a second class citizen. This is a misconception people have. And guess what? If Islam is so oppressive to, uh, to women, you know who the fastest grow religion on earth today. But it might be Islam, but... And guess what? Would you guess how many in the ratio of men and women that is reverting to Islam? We say revert. You know why we say revert? Do you think everyone's coming back eventually? No, we believe everyone is born being a Muslim. So the idea of innate disposition, do you remember the fitrah? So everyone is born, born being believing God, because that's what Islam means. Islam means submission to God. So anyone who submits to God, is right, it's called a Muslim. In the Western world, where yeah. women have more freedom of speech. Yeah. The, lar and the largest, uh, in terms of number wise, men and female, women by large, if not triple the amount of men, revert to Islam. And guess what? 78,000 research shows 78,000 people revert every year, and majority are women. So why would a British, uh, black or white, different ethnic background, and, and the study shows actually average age of 27, 25, they've done one year or two years of research, so it's not out of emotion, it's because they're out of intellectual reasons. Muslims don't feed all these rivers, rice and curries, like, it's not emotional arguments, intellectual arguments, and, and people revert to Islam intellectually. You see, and majority are women. So this idea of like Islam oppresses women actually does not exist within Islamic teaching. I tell you where it what exists. About sort of the clothing that women have to wear and, and sort of the, the sort of teachings of the Quran that in, in all religion, which is why I'm not religious, talks about serving your husband and serving the man. And it doesn't actually talk about. That's more. I would say that's more of Christianity, with all respect. But going back to it, Islam does have a, a moral system and guidance for men and women. So in Islamically, we ordered Islam and, and tells us that a man has a certain way of dressing and women has a certain way of dressing. Like for instance, some of the dress code for men is men cannot wear uh, golds or jewelries. Yeah? Yes. Or and uh, wear uh, and, and materials that are made of silk or, or these things, yeah? Men are not allowed to put on makeups and so on and these things Islamically. Men are not also allowed to uh, wear something that exposes uh, between their knee and their belly button because that's the private part of a man. So men Islamically have a dress code and women have a dress code for men. But who determines these dress codes? Is it men ourselves? Is it human beings like other religions or is it God? What do you think? Where did this moral, objective morals come from? I'm asking you. Where do you think? I'm assuming God didn't tell them how to dress. But if there is, if there is a being that is all powerful, we believe that being has to be able to communicate with us and tell us morally what's acceptable and what's not. So Give us a guidance. It's not logical if God is communicating with you. No, but then if God created this magnificent universe, 
and just leave it blindly, then it's like an absent father or absent parents. Imagine your parents. Imagine, I want to give you an example. You could just make up that God is communicating that you need to do this. No, we, we, no with, with evidence. With How evidence. is there evidence? Where okay, is there evidence? Okay. So the evidence are uh, the last revelations in, within the Quran. The Quran is the, your evidence. I'll give you an example. But that's the same with every book. No, but those, uh, the books in, in, in respect of what I said to you before, in terms of other books, they say claims, but they can't evidentially prove it. We can evidence it. Ali, come here, Get involved in this discussion. 